Well, I'm John Lundell, and I'm the homeowner along with my wife, Diana. We've lived here since uh, 1993. The entire driveway and edging needed to be replaced. Through my experience with the city, I know that there, we've done a lot of the permeable paver work around the community. And so I was somewhat aware of the environmental aspects of using permeable pavers. So I spoke with the engineering department and asked if they thought it would be an appropriate uh, place to, to implement pavers on our driveway. And they were very excited about that. The, both the Johnson County Soil and Water Conservation District as well as the uh, stormwater specialist for the city of Corville, they've been part of the process since the very beginning. This, the first thing we did was have soil borings taken. So last fall in two locations on the property they drilled down about six feet and to see what kind of soil we have on our property and that uh, aids in the calculation of the, how deep the system needs to be here and if it's an appropriate place to do the pavers. And then in the winter they also got me in touch with the state forester and he came by and looked at some of the trees on our property to determine what impact this system might have on the roots of the trees. And then in the spring, I sent out a request for proposal to local contractors, and they helped me identify contractors that have done this type of work before. And they've always been there with great advice and guidance and, and information on what the next step should be. And then, of course, financially, they've also been a great partner with us. Both the, the, the city of Corville has had a stormwater um, incentive program for projects like this and rain gardens and rain barrels and, and so we applied for and received some funding uh, from that source and then the Johnson County Soil and Water Conservation District has a similar program and uh, they were gracious enough to grant us some funds to support this project as well. My name is Amy Bowska and I work for the Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship and I am an urban conservationist. Last year, John and Diana Lundell approached us about doing a permeable driveway at their residence. What we're trying to do there is, unlike a, a traditional pavement where the water just runs off, for a permeable pavement, the water moves through in between the bricks, down into a rock chamber. There'll be a series of rock chambers underneath the, the pavers, and the water moves in between each of the paver blocks. So rather than moving off, the driveway, the permeable pavement actually gives you a chance for the water to move down below the surface. The permeable paver systems are initially designed to at least manage one and a quarter inch rainfall. Today, um, over, over half of the water when it rains, it runs off of our Iowa landscapes and streets play a huge role in that. The permeable paver is designed to allow that water to move down, to soak down into the ground rather than run off. So not only can we improve the quality of the water by that because it takes that first flush of pollutants as they move off the driveway or the road, um, it also helps to cool the temperature of the water. As water moves off parking lots, it gets very hot. So that water in a permeable system actually can become cooling as it moves down through the rock profile. I'm Dan Holderness, I'm the Corville City Engineer. Permeable pavers is a very good way to help Again, you know, get the water into the back into the groundwater where it ought to be, and, and keep it from causing the uh, detrimental effects it has if it runs off from the surface. Or if you have a pervious surface that does not allow water to run through, when you get rain, uh, you know, it just everything runs off, and nothing soaks into the ground as, as a normal uh, grass lawn or you know normal nature or uh, grass field would. And so this causes a number of problems. It carries pollutants off the parking lots, and um, it also causes channel erosion problems because there's more water that comes off the impervious surface faster and so it causes erosion problems and then once, once it gets to the uh, channels or the rivers it can cause flooding issues. My name is Nick Jensen. I work at Culver's Landscaping in Marion, Iowa. Uh, my job title is Commercial Project Manager for the Commercial Landscape Division at Culver's. Permeable pavers got the three layers of rock and then the pavement would be the fourth. Um, it's all clean aggregate rock. Clean is the magical word. Has to be clean, no fines in it that will stop the water from infiltrating. There's probably eight to 10 different colors um, that can be chosen from. There are different shapes, uh, different laying patterns, textures. Um, there's a lot of possibilities out there um, to get extremely creative. The primary surface was asphalt with some concrete uh, aprons out near the sidewalk. The, when the contractors arrived on site, the first thing they did is come in with a backhoe and started pulling up that asphalt to expose the bare dirt, basically clay. 
And then they came in, and, and I should mention that both the asphalt and the concrete were recycled. They were taken to, to a, a local recycler, so that was another green aspect of the project, that they were able to reuse what the, the, the previous material. Then they went in and they excavated out that clay soil down to a depth of about 26 inches, I would say. That became the basin, as they call it, that collects this rainwater. So the next step was they have a permeable cloth. It's a black cloth that they line that basin with, and that keeps the soil from infiltrating around this rock chamber. That will be the next thing that goes in. So it separates the soil from the rocks. And then they bring in, I believe it was about 225 tons of stone. And um, starting with the first layer were stones about the size of my fist. And they put that in for about a foot deep or so over the entire area. And then they came back with more conventional sized gravel about the size of maybe a half dollar or so. And then they brought that up to nearly the level that they wanted it to be, the elevation for the pavers. And then they brought in the, the smallest size uh, gravel that was about a half inch in diameter. And they screeded it to, keep, to get it at the exact elevation that they wanted to set the pavers on. And then they came in and that's what this, this, these pavers sit right on top of. Every paver is in the shape of an L, and you can see these crevices in between. They're about, about a half inch um, width. And so once the pavers were installed, then um, it was backfilled with granite chips. And that's what these little things are, are granite chips. And that's what filtrates the water. The one other aspect that I haven't described yet is there's, just like on your bathtub at home, there's an emergency overflow. So um, there's a drainage tile that goes underneath the entire um, project here, about a five inch or so diameter drainage tile that's perforated. In the event of a ex very extreme rainfall, this basin is likely to fill up. That water will drain into that drainage tile and there's a discharge down in the gully over there. It's there just in case we do have a, a high rain event. That rock system that I described actually extends about 18 inches beyond the edge of the brick. I can take these two bricks up, and there's a little plastic cap, take the plastic cap off, and I can either stick a, a tape measure down there and I can actually measure how deep the water is. And it's called a monitoring well. So one of the aspects of the permeable paver system in the winter is that you know, during the day when the sun's out, the snow or the ice may melt. And with a conventional system, of, with a concrete or asphalt, it ponds and then it freezes at night and you end up in you know, very slick conditions. Permeable paver, if it melts, it's gonna soak down through and go away. So when it gets cold at night, there's nothing left to freeze. So it's a, it's a great system in the winter as well. Since they've installed the system, we've only had a couple significant rainfalls, but I've gone outside and, and watched, and clearly the, the, it's just as, just as uh, promised. The water doesn't just go straight down. It doesn't run off. It, doesn't, it just goes, it soaks right into the system underneath us. Standard regular pavement roads for driveways, you'd put in three to four inches of a crushed rock, like a, a Class A material. It has fines in it and it packs hard. It doesn't allow moisture to permeate through it. It's becoming an option for developers to put in permeable paver roadways and their developments to eliminate storm sewers, to eliminate retention basins. So in turn, they, their cost savings of no, no storm drains being in the projects and, and no retention basins, they can add a couple more lots to their properties and, and have more availability to sell lots. But in, in a lot of applications where runoff is a concern, this will eliminate the majority of runoff. So there is a lot of benefit to going this route versus traditional paving methods. There are only six communities in the state right now that actually provide funding to municipalities. And we are in Johnson County, the, the city of Iowa City, the city of Coralville and the city of North Liberty provide funding for things like rainwater harvesting, for rain gardens, 
uh, permeable pavement. Um, the Johnson County Soil and Water Conservation District also has funding. So if a homeowner is interested, they just simply have to contact either our office or contact one of the municipalities where they live and talk with their stormwater program manager. Through the Johnson County Soil and Water Conservation District, all homeowners are eligible to apply, businesses are eligible, uh, churches, nonprofit groups, and that goes for a lot of the municipalities as well. So really it's, it's wide open in terms of who can apply. We have a program here at the City of Coralville that um, you can apply if you're doing a, a, a what's called a BMP, a Best Management Practice for Stormwater Quality here in the City of Coralville as an individual. You can apply for assistance from the city and we will pay for 50% uh, of the cost up to $2,000 per um, residents uh, to help assist with those kind of projects. There are many applications for permeable pavement. You can see it for driveways, you can see it for roads. Um, one of the neat applications that we're seeing are patios now, uh, where people can have a permeable patio. You know, our goals is uh, over time to, uh, to minimize the impact that we have with the impervious surfaces in the city and to improve the water quality that runs off from our, not only our, our pavements and our roofs, but also our lawns and everything. And so we have a number of programs that we're working to try to improve the water quality so that we can improve the quality of the you know, waters of the state of Iowa. We're becoming more conscious and aware of our environment and, and uh, Coralville is, is a growing community and uh, we have a lot of uh, recreational opportunities here in parks and, and lakes and rivers and things and it's important to be good stewards of the environment and to minimize the negative impact we have upon the environment with our, our built society and so uh, um, we think it's important to try to improve the quality of the water so we can improve the a quality of the lakes and the Clear Creek and the Owl River as it goes on away from the city. It's very important that we start looking at ways to mitigate the amount of runoff, the amount of rain that falls off and just runs off into Clear Creek. Um, and this gives us an opportunity to be able to not only reduce that amount but also treat it in the, in the process. The trend over the last several years has been to see more and more of this. Uh, where people seem to be the most um, comfortable starting with it is in a driveway situation and that's why we're so excited to have the Lundells um, putting the permeable pavers in, in their driveway because people will be able to see the, how it works. Um, to learn uh, how water actually moves down through into the soil and how it improves our water. I'm very happy to say that this project exceeded my expectations. It's a beautiful improvement to our home and, and it makes us very proud of, of our home and how it looks. It, we took the environmental um, uh, route and, and did something that hopefully will improve the community groundwater and so forth. So um, there's some personal pride there as well. This project is a, is a great example of cooperation between the city of Coralville and, and the county. The county and the city are both interested in improving the stormwater quality. So they teamed together to, to help us with this project from the very beginning, as I described, and um, help us install this system as an example of how um, what a homeowner could do to contribute towards stormwater quality. In our urban environment, there's so much pavement around parking lots, driveways, and so forth, and that just contributes to a massive amount of stormwater. And that's what it leads to environmental concerns um, in terms of, of runoff and water quality issues. Um, through a system like we installed, it uh, reduces that stormwater runoff by allowing it to go straight down into the earth and it gets cleansed as it does that. So it's, it's, it's a contribution towards the long run of improving our, our environmental water quality. I really hope this is a catalyst to other people to consider doing this.